Now let's talk about S parameters. We'll start by taking a simple case. A load at the end of a transmission line with a generator on one end. If we imagine, for example, that the load impedance is equal to the characteristic impedance of the line, anything that comes down the transmission line from the generator will see a perfect load and will have no reflection. If we call the amplitude of the incoming wave A and the amplitude of the outgoing wave B, the ratio of the outgoing and incoming amplitudes we'll call it S. And we can write a little equation B equals SA. So in the case of a match load, S is going to be zero. For anything else, in general, B, S, and A are actually going to be complex quantities, of course. That's why we need to define a reference point, or definition plane. So this S is our one-dimensional scattering parameter. It's for a one-port uh, linear network. In general, S is going to be a function of frequency, but we'll worry about that later. Now we can extend this idea to a linear network with multiple ports. Instead of column vectors for i and v, we're going to make column vectors out of a, a's and b's. And the matrix this time is called the scattering matrix. And hence, that's why they're the s parameters. Let's see how this works. For a given n port, linear n port system, each port has an incoming, an outcoming, and a characteristic impedance. And they each have a definition plane. What comes out of a given port is going to be the sum of each incoming wave modified by a factor that depends on how the ports couple to each other. So looking at the first row, S11 represents how much port A reflects back on itself. S12 tells you how much an input from port 2 comes out of port 1. In the second row, S21 is the coupling factor from port 1 to port 2, and so on. So why would we do this? Why use S parameters? At RF and microwave frequencies, it's often not practical to use lumped elements and regular circuit analysis. And often all you care about is how much gain, loss, and phase shift you have. Let's look at how we construct the S parameters for a given network. Conceptually, what we're doing is driving one port at a time and looking at what comes out the other ports. So to find S11, what we want to do is drive port 1. So we have A1 coming into port 1. And then to make sure that nothing is coming in from the other ports, what we do is we terminate them. And then what we look at, what we look at is B1 coming out of port one. And whatever we've got on port one, we kind of assume that it's perfectly driving A1 and perfectly sucking in B1. So that's our equation. For S21, we do something similar. What we care about is what comes out of port 2 and what comes into port 1. 
So in this case, we terminate the ports that we're not driving. And we have B2 over A1 while making sure that the other ports that are not driven are not driven. The general expression here is S NM, where N is the row and M is the column. Basically, it's what comes out of the row port over what goes in the, uh, the column port. And now for some definitions. Our incoming and outcoming amplitudes are represented by voltages over the square root of the characteristic impedance of each port. The plus indicates incident and the minus indicates reflected. The units are volts over square root of ohms. So in general, we have n ports, and this applies to all of them. The incident power is P sub n plus, and the outgoing power is P sub n minus. These are in units of volts of volt squared over ohms. We can also write V sub n, which is the expression for the total voltage at a port, consists of the incoming and outgoing voltages. And of course we can express that in terms of the A's and B's. The I sub n is the current going into a port. As you might expect, it's the voltage over the uh, characteristic impedance, and we can also write it in terms of the A's and B's.